Hello and welcome to Nurses Handbook. Today, I will be telling you about one of the most important anti-arrhythmic drug that is injection adenosine. Injection adenosine is an anti-arrhythmic drug available in a sterile solution where each ampule contains 6 mg of adenosine per 2 ml of solution. This drug is stored at a temperature not exceeding 25 degrees centigrade. Now moving to its mechanism of action. Injection adenosine depresses the conduction through AV node and thus restores the normal heart rhythm. Injection adenosine also helps in diagnosing a broad or narrow QRS complex tachycardia. The half-life of the intravenous adenosine is less than 10 seconds and that's one of the reasons that it must be administered rapidly. Now let us see the indications of administering injection adenosine. Firstly, it is used in the treatment of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. Second, it is used to differentiate and diagnose re-entrant atrial tachycardia and ventricular tachycardia. Thirdly, it is used in non-invasive assessment techniques like pharmacological stress testing, single photon emission computed tomography, thallium 201 scintigraphy, etc. Coming to the dosage and administration. In adults, elderly and children weighing more than 50 kg, an initial dose of 6 mg is given rapidly and if PSVT not reverted, second dose of 12 mg adenosine is given. If after the second dose also, the PSVT not reverted, then we administer 12 mg again. In case of children weighing less than 50 kg, the initial dose is 0.05 to 0.1 mg per kg. And if PSVT not reverted, injections are given incrementally increasing the dose by 0.05 to 0.1 mg per kg. Injections continue until PSVT converts to normal sinus rhythm or the patient reaches maximum single dose. In children, maximum single dose is 0.3 mg per kg. Remember, after each shot of adenosine, minimum 20 ml of normal saline needs to be flushed. Let us now see the contraindications for the use of injection adenosine. First is, it should not be given to a patient suffering from non-hypersensitivity. Second, it is not to be given in patients having second or third degree block, bronchial asthma and sick sinus syndrome. Adenosine has got drug incompatibility, so it should not be mixed with the other drugs and certain foods. Now coming to the interactions. Firstly, let us see the drug interaction. When it is administered with carbamazepine, it will increase the degree of heart block. If given along with digoxin and verapamil, it will depress the SA and AV node leading to ventricular fibrillation. Lastly, if this drug is given along with methyl methylsantines such as theophylline, it will antagonize the effect of adenosine. Now coming to the interaction with food. That is, intake of caffeine will antagonize the action of adenosine. Now let us see the adverse reactions of injection adenosine. Related to central nervous system, one may experience apprehension, CVA, dizziness, headache, heaviness in arms, lightheadedness, nervousness, paresthesia, seizures, etc. Related to the cardiovascular system, one may experience atrial fibrillation, bradycardia, cardiac arrest, chest pain or pressure, heart block, hypertension, hypotension, myocardial infarction, palpitations, prolonged asystole, tachycardia, sinus exit block or pause, sustained ventricular tachycardia, torsadis D points, transient hypertension, ventricular fibrillation, etc. Related to the ENT, blood vision, metallic taste, sore tightness are commonly seen. And in the integumentary system, diaphoresis, erythema, facial flushing, rash, etc. Coming to the respiratory system, one may experience bronchoconstriction, bronchospasm, dyspnea, hyperventilation, respiratory arrest, etc. In the gastrointestinal system, nausea and vomiting are commonly seen. In the musculoskeletal system, jaw, neck and back pain are common. Other than these, Injection site reactions including pain, sensitivity reactions are commonly seen in patients. 
let us see the nursing consideration while handling this injection. First, this drug should not be given to patients with sign and symptoms of acute myocardial ischemia. Second consideration is to check for any crystals before use. If the injection is not clear, do not give it to the patient. Third consideration is when we use this drug for treatment of PSVT, it should be rapidly given over 1 to 2 seconds followed by a saline push to prevent systemic vasodilation and reflex tachycardia. Fourth is during thallium to not one myocardial perfusion scintigraphy, injection adenosine should be given as a continuous peripheral infusion over 6 minutes and the required dose of thallium 201 should be injected at the midpoint of the adenosine infusion as thallium 201 is compatible with adenosine. Fifth responsibility is that injection adenosine should be always given directly into a vein to make sure drug reaches systemic circulation. But if given into a peripheral IV line, the insertion site should be as close to patient heart as possible and the injection to be followed with rapid saline flush. Sixth responsibility is while administering adenosine, always take patient on cardiac monitor and monitor heart rate, rhythm, blood pressure and respiratory status. A nurse should be aware that at the time of conversion to normal sinus rhythm, arrhythmia such as PACs, PVCs, sinus bradycardia, sinus tachycardia or AV block may occur for a few seconds. There are some warnings associated with its use. They are stop the drug if these signs are seen that is respiratory difficulty or any signs of hypersensitivity such as chest discomfort, erythema, flushing or rash and it should be immediately informed to the physician too. Second warning is don't give single doses of adenosine more than 12 mg in adults and 0.03 mg per kg in children. Now coming to the patient teaching. First, explain to your patient about the risk for serious adverse effects. Secondly, educate the patient about signs of hypersensitivity such as chest pain, palpitations, difficulty in breathing, headache, etc. Thirdly, educate the patient about the mild, temporary reactions that may occur such as flushing, nausea and dizziness and tell them not to get panic. Thank you for watching. For more updates like this, do like, comment and subscribe to the channel Nurses Handbook.